interesting the things for me that go into putting a concert like this together. Um, one of the things is to figure out, well, of course, which music and what, what, what the theme is going to be. So, I mean, obviously, uh, this week, the theme is Earth Day. So then I say to myself, what, what, are you gonna, what are you gonna do with Earth Day? What do you want to say, uh, you know, about the Earth and about our connection with it? So that, that becomes part of the picture. And then what songs to do and how to do the songs. Now, for example, the first song that we're playing today, uh, I have gone through about 13 permutations of that particular piece in different time signatures, different rhythms, different sounds. And so, uh, and I had to figure out a sound for the beginning of the piece. And one of my favorite things to do is, is to play with synthesizers. I just dearly love playing with electronic equipment. So I wanted I wanted the sound of a French horn. So I started with I started with the French horn, but then I thought, well, that's a little plain. So then I found this cool kind of sort of mysterious kind of patch that sort of feels like, oh, yeah, you know, something sort of mysterious. And then, um, and then, and then I found sort of an imitation singer's patch. So when you put those together, the sound that I want. That's the sound I've been looking for. So, I have to store that. Have that ready. Um, you know, there are all kinds of interesting things, like, for example, one of the songs that we're doing today, I added a significant chunk of material to it. And so, uh, that had to be practiced. And then, and then the voice had to be practiced. And so I'm working on, I'm working on a song <laughs> and my lovely wife Jane who was in the back bedroom says, hey, the vowel on the word cool, you got to have more ooh than ooh, okay? <laughs> so we worked through all those little details. Um, you will actually hear Jane reading today. You won't see her. You will hear her because she'll be reading some lyrics. So I think that's enough of the uh, preparation. Are we ready to yes, take this thing off? we are ready. Let's see what we can do.
like a lark who is learning to
of the cool of the morning when, when you still have a bit of the night fragrance and the day hasn't rushed in to take it away yet. Everything is kind of still. This is morning.
As uh, many of you know, one of the things I love to do on these programs, we, have, we didn't do it last week, um, but I love to, to, to get people's experiences. I love to have people write back to me and say, oh, I, I had this thing happen to me. Today, we're, we're talking about experiences that you've had with this earth, uh, this environment in which we try to thrive. Um, for example, um, it may be as it was for me at the, at, the, at the tender age of eight. It was a tree outside my bedroom window. And if we get a chance, we'll sing the tree song later. The tree outside my bedroom window it was, it was my magic place. It was a place where I could climb up in that tree and I could have these fantastic sort of flights of fancy. I, I was a space captain, and I was a I was Tarzan of the jungle. And, uh, I was a, let's see what else did I do? Oh, I, I was a I had great wealth, and I could look from the top of my tree down on the world below me and see all my great possessions. I, I the joke is that every day a different fairy princess would come to me to be my special companion. That's before they told me about the idea of monogamy. Uh, kind of. Kind of messed with my life, but it was a good messing. So, at any rate, uh, a lot of us have those special experiences. Next week we're singing about special places, but a lot of us have special experiences with the earth. I took a walk. I, I walked in the desert. I, I sat on the lava on the big volcano in Hawaii. Um, I actually uh, went swimming off the island of Maui and went underwater and heard whale song with the unaided ear. And it was amazing. I got up from that moment and knew I'd been in a holy place. So uh, I, I would like for you, if you're willing, to write in the, in the chat about an experience that you had with our beloved Earth. Uh, one of the ones that uh, has come to us is from our friend Kathy Lyon. Sonny, would you read that one to us? Yes. So Kathy Lyon writes, This year we planted some vegetables and strawberries in container gardens on our deck. It lightens my soul to look out the windows and see everything grow with a promise of tomorrow and good things to come. It is especially uplifting with the pandemic and because I'm still recovering from cancer battles. The future is coming and I still buy green bananas. <laughs>
So, if you if you have an experience, um, you know that t ties you to the earth, that that made you sit up and take notice, sort of wakes you up. Uh, we'd love to hear about it. This next piece is a bit of a challenge. It's called "Too Many Gods." will spoil the garden. It comes from a musical that was produced in the 80s called Love, You Spoke a Word. And it was actually um, performed at the 1984 World's, I believe it was 84, the World's Fair in Knoxville, Tennessee. There was a group of uh, young singers who performed this like what, 12 times a day, I think, something like that. Love, You Spoke a Word. And this song, a lot of, a lot of that musical is about our concern for the earth, uh, for the environment. And so this piece comes out of that musical, uh, Too Many Gods Will Spoil the Garden. Watch out. Yeah, turn. 
Let there be life. Let there be light. Let there be birth. Let there be great celebration. Dance, dance, dance by the light of a far-flung star, by the light of the silver moon in the deep dark mist of the cooling night to the rhythm of rain, to the music of wind, to the sound of the thunder breaking on the ear like the waves of the sea, like the rumbling roar of a young swift river as it dashes down over rocks and hills on the headlong chase to its home in the arms of the sea. Dance to the sound of a great volcano, roaring, breaking, shooting up lava high in the sky like a great celebration. Dance to the singing of the howling wind and the howling wolf who sing duets in the winter cold. Dance together on a snow-capped mountain to the silent rhythm of the northern lights, to the noisy music of the winter wind playfully tossing the snow in the air. Dance together in the great outback to the kookaburra's laugh and the sound of a thousand kangaroos all running like the wind across the range forever. Dance to the sound of tropical birds in the steamy heat of a tropical jungle. Dance now, ever more slowly, Dance now, ever more slowly. Wait. Stop. Stand now, utterly still, and listen to hear the rhythm of life in the stillness and calm of equatorial seas. Do they dance thus on other worlds that creation has woven into the tapestry? Do they run across the mountains? And do they know the sound of rushing wind? Do they float on clouds? almost motionless? And do they fly without the aid of wings? Do they live far beneath the ground in a myriad of protected caverns? And do they glow with the fire and passion of existence? Do they sing? And with what voices? Do they wonder about the other worlds? For all that love has caused to be, both now and in eternity. O God of love, to you we raise our song, our hymn of grateful praise. Well, I got shivers down the back. Thank you, Dave, very, very much. Uh, well, let's see. Let's check in with uh, Sonia. Mm. Our reader. Do we have uh, an experience or two? Or? Oh, so many. <laughs> I'm having trouble choosing. You know what, people? If, if, if we don't choose yours, please be understanding. We can't, we can't get them all and we'll do the best we can. Yes. 
All right, here's one. Oh, that was good and perfect for today. This is Brian Taylor. He said, when I was teaching high school choral music, my sisters and I decided to raise money and plant trees in the schoolyard entrance. Some of those trees are 25 years old now. They still are proud of the time we spent giving back. That same year, during the choir hour, we had a solar eclipse. We took the piano out and sang every earth type song we had, Aquarius, Let the Sun Shine. In one of the trees we planted, at the height of the eclipse, a robin nested right next to the choir. Awesome, love those memories.
than we have before. Well, have you got another one for me? Oh, yes. Oh. Okay, this one is from Mary, and she says, I was on the hardest hike of my life, huffing and puffing in the high Sierra at 11,000 feet, scrambling up a steep, rocky hillside above the tree line. I was just about ready to give up when I spied a clump of wildflowers growing out of the rocks. I figured if they could make it, so could I. totally different where you might not expect nature. So Anna says, I'm crossing paths in life with someone who lives in and loves the city. It has me falling in love with a whole different set of experiences, feeling the breeze through the window as we dance in the eighth floor apartment, giggling while running down a city sidewalk, then looking down and watching for the little flowers that are always growing through the cracks. Thank you. 
what? I don't think it will work. Cause I'll be here longer than you will. says, one silent retreat after the rain, I was walking the grounds and was stopped by an autumn leaf hanging from a gossamer thread dancing. I had to look carefully to see the gossamer thread. The wind was blowing the leaf every which way. I had been impressed all week by the theme of life as a dance and seeing that little leaf dance felt like an encounter with holy presence. Jennifer says, 
I think of a place I've been once that have, has left an indelible mark on my spirit. I was in the Muir Woods in 1977 and felt the majesty of creation deeply within. I still get that feeling when I think of being there. It's similar to the feeling I get when I read, read those words from Psalm 8, when I gaze into the night skies and see the work of your fingers. sit on the end of that dock for hours and hours and just think about things and reflect and fantasize and imagine. One of them was in a little rowboat I used to take out uh, on the lake and I used to put a portable radio on the end of the dock so I could hear 
how to get back. Uh, as I said, my tree was a favorite place. There are lots of favorite places. But let's, let's do this. Let's try to get to some of these stories if we can, because these are really beautiful. And uh, we'll combine these with stories about special places. And so that will be our uh, subject for next week. Now, let me, let me remind you, if you want to help this work stay alive, we really would love to have your contribution. You can, there's a donate button there. You can go on that donate button and donate to Interlude, which is our nonprofit. That's a totally tax-free donation. And the other thing that would help greatly is if you will go to the, our website, www.kenmedema.com, and download one song. That's a, just a dollar. One little dollar is all it's going to cost you. One little dollar for one little song. That would really, really, really help us greatly. Uh, Grace has been really good to us during this season, and I'm so honored and glad. But we do need the help. And so, uh, website, kenmedema.com or interluderetreats.org. Uh, Tax-free donation. Next week, favorite places. I think that's all the announcements, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Good. Then I'll sing our final song. This is the end of the cantata called The Weaver, for which Jane read the poem. And this is called Children of Earth. It's kind of a benediction, really. Children of Earth, we were men for communion. Join one to all in the holy design bound by the thread that is life all renewing freeing the love of the weaver divine turn thou from fear and from force and from Good night, everybody.